This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and to run your business. Oh my gosh! I did not know you were coming to Bali. Come on in. <laughs> you guys, I have Jenny behind the camera today. I am in Bali teaching at my first ever international workshop that I am not the one organizing. We've done workshops internationally with Build and Bloom in Paris and London, and this is the first one where I just show up and I teach and I pour into students, and it's been so amazing. I'm with Institute of Code, if you're curious. I can link that down below, or you've probably seen lots on social about it. But today I wanna share with you everything that I bring in my work bag for a photography workshop as a teacher, so very specific. Now I've done videos in the past before. I recently did one um, back in Berlin when I was going across Europe and I packed for my personal travel, which includes a lot of film photography gear. Now since I'm teaching photography here and I'm teaching digital, um, I brought a lot with me, almost everything in my collection. Um, and I also had to be extra mindful of all my batteries, all my memory cards, because we go out on these really cool remote excursions, but you have to be prepared. And I also brought lenses for students to use. So for instance, yesterday we went to this really awesome waterfall and one student, um, she was using a Canon Rebel and then the Nifty 50, the 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. And I was like, hey, do you want to use my Sigma 24 just to show them different variety? We have some with zoom lenses. You've got to get them accustomed to the prime lens you know so, so I wanted to share everything that I brought and I hope that this is kind of informative or interesting I where should we begin let's start off actually with this desk so in this drawer we're here for 10 days for the workshop and three days before three days after math 16 days in Bali which is like a dream come true in this little desk um, drawer I've put all the things that I don't really need to grab for class necessarily. I have a ton of film, hee hee hee, just girly teens when she shoots film. The film that I kind of have been obsessed with on this trip, should I move it here, where should I move it? Where's oh, the light good. best? Fuji Color 200, super cheap and happy. Now I have a ton of film photography tutorials. I'll link one or two or three or all in the iCard. So if you're curious about even how to travel with film, I got this, it's like a new one. This was like five bucks. I go to Omega Photo in Bellevue in Seattle for those interested. And then of course we have to get the classic Portra 160. Never shot with this actually before. Love Portra though. What else? Do they care about this, Jenny? I feel like they do. They Maybe do. they don't. Okay, let's see. We have Kodak Ektar 100. And I've never really shot with this kind of, like the 100, 160, 200 ISO because I always, why? Okay, I love to go to cities. And I'm always going to cities in like February or October in the dead of winter. This is my first time in a tropical place and this is my first time in Asia. We get here and I'm like, why am I going to... Scotland in February when I can go to Bali in February. So this is my first time experimenting around with these, um, this film and then I'm gonna get developed here in Bali. But if you wanna learn how to travel with film through all the x-rays, that video, uh, definitely check it out. So then I brought some filters. I have an ND and then I have a CP filter. This is from Pro Filter, I think is the, I don't actually remember the exact name of the company. This is good for video, which we actually haven't touched this whole time, but I have them for video in case we're doing some tutorials here. Oh, I'll have that linked above too for y'all. Um, is this on? I don't know why I just keep getting this thing that it's off. No, it's on. It's on. Okay. Then speaking of audio, I have a little backup mic um, and I've been using this for the blog we've been making with Institute of Code. Just as a backup too, I used to pack a lav mic with me as well, but now we're wireless. So I just have one in case as well. We have only two battery chargers. So we have my Leica charger and then my Canon. And I have many more of these chargers at home, but for my trip, since this is kind of heavy, I only went with um, one of each. We have the cords for the Leica and then we have a Lissy drive. Now I, bought this Lissy drive at Best Buy right before I left. It's two terabytes. I usually work off of four terabytes. Um, but I wanted to just have a drive with my current projects I'm working on and then the Bali stuff. And then obviously I'll fill this up when I get back home, but I just didn't really feel 
comfortable bringing my main drive back home with me, even though I have a backup. I don't know, I'm just weird about. So I have my current projects on this, but I love these things. Um, they're so good. The students have been using WD, my passports, which I have used before, and then the C ones. Now, that is it for this drawer. Again, I have like office supplies in here, and we're not gonna go through my office supplies um, and things like that, because it's all in the classroom right now, but we will go through my carry-on, AKA my camera bag. Now, I have come to the realization that I need to purchase a true like Pelican soft padded carry-on bag. Um, especially when I'm coming on trips like this that are just for work, just for the workshop. But I have been able to get away with my carry-on for a while now, and it is time to upgrade soon, but I do really like this. And I have a system for how it works and how I get all my gear safely, because I'm sure, I see so many like photographers who travel with a Pelican and they travel with all these really like, it's meant for going on the airplane for their gear. And then I forget though, that though that's important and I need to do that, so many of you, aren't at that stage yet and you are also traveling in the carry-on, that's why I don't feel insecure about sharing this <laughs> setup right now because I think it's helpful. So if you see yourself traveling and you're really wanting, you have a lot of gear that you're trying to organize and keep nice and safe, not that this won't keep it safe, maybe look into investing, that's what I'm gonna do. But just to be totally transparent with you, this is what I've done and it's been fine. This carry-on though stays with me. It never leaves my sight. It doesn't go under in the cargo. It's my carry-on. My carry-on had to be, da -da 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 -da. anyone guess how light it had to be? Eight kilos. We were flying with Eva Air and this is the lightest I've ever had to have a carry-on be. Usually for reference, it's like 12 kilos for carry-on, which is fine, but it meant I had to pack light which I'm okay with but y'all camera gear weighs a lot and there was a point when we couldn't move anything else or like, can you move and I'm like I'm sorry this is it I could move batteries but then the batteries they said are yeah anyways so all of my stuff always for the most part stays in one side of the carry-on the other side is empty or if it's Okay, if there's stuff in this other side, like clothes, I might put some things, but in this case of eight kilos, this is empty, this is full. I'm not gonna do half and half because then that is like a lot of rattling around, right? So let's just get into it now that I've justified myself. Before we do that, I always pack with me this backpack, folds down nicely, and it's also just versatile for the trips themselves. And then I also bring with me always a big leather Madewell tote. I love it, it's in the classroom, but that folds down. That's more for practical, practicality, like I shared in the, um, the travel film video back in Germany. I like that tote bag because that's when we're just out and about hanging out. In this case for work, I'm most likely using my backpack. So, and you know, we go on excursions, but a lot of the photography is also done at the villa. Okay, anyways, let's get into it. So to begin, I have this lovely bag still from Denmark when I bought my contacts. And I didn't use my contacts in Seattle because I had like 10 days in the city before I left for Bali. So I just brought everything in this bubbled wrap. I figured that was the smartest thing to do. But it turns out this, um, they didn't give me like the back, the back lens cap for one of the lenses or the front lens cap for another. So uh, it's been like hanging out in there. That's why we still have this little nice bag. But I love this Photoshop. This is in Copenhagen. If you're in Copenhagen and you like film, you want to get into it, they have the best selection and best customer service. But yeah, that's why it's still there. So um, I love these soft shell cases from Low Pro. I love them. I have like a big cube and then this is an SD. We'll get into all this. And then this is like batteries and audio or it had audio before we put stuff in the drawers. These are great for traveling. They also pack down, but they aren't hard shell. So you do have to be pretty conscious. Like I'm not gonna just throw this at the bottom of my suitcase. I'll use my hard shell SD card holder back at home. But I do really like this. I love their products. Now let's just, should we get into this first? There's so many things. Let's open this puppy on up. And here we have two Canon batteries. We had another Canon. We had that mic that was the um, wireless one that you mount, whatever, the road thing. You know what I mean, the off-brand road. Headphones for audio, which we're not using right now because we're not audio engineers and I forget that you have to use headphones sometimes to hear whatever, it's fine. It's YouTube, y'all. Then in here, 
This is the SD and CF card holder, which my CF card is currently in. I honestly didn't bring a ton of SD cards, um, but I did go to Best Buy and I bought like a 128 and like two more 64s. And then this is a CF reader. I have CF cards because my Mark II only took CF. And now I mostly use SD. I love this pouch because it has so much storage in it. Front pocket, you can put amazing open it up I just I love the shape of this it's so wonderful so in here I would hold my Sigma 35 art lens I held my 24 Sigma art lens which we're filming on right now and then we have the Rode um, mic stuff for the wireless mic we're currently using and then in this pocket are the wires for that mic and you can really get creative I mean there's so much storage just within this little guy I love it I'm obsessed with it so <clears throat> now getting into more of the cameras themselves. So I have a Mark IV that Jenny is currently filming on and I only have one body uh, of the Mark IV. That will kind of get tucked away separate and I might, I don't want to say that I like wrap everything up because camera gear, especially Canon, is still durable but you, I do put it maybe between two soft things. A little pouch, canvas pouch from Neutrogena actually. Fun campaign with them. Inside this guy is my Contax G2. In Bali, it was my first time shooting with this guy. Um, and we're coming out with a tutorial soon, if not already out, with some portraits just around the villa because it's so pretty here. Then we have my Leica. Got this in Milan as a little travel camera personal thing. You can also do video on it. I know I sound so like, I feel weird sharing this guy but I really, really, really love it. Um, and if you guys want me to do any video, kind of any tutorials on the Leica and how I like it, um, I can totally do that, but I do love this. And I only have the 18 millimeter lens on, uh, on him, on her, sorry. She pouches here, a lens, my wallet, and then another camera. So let's go into, let's start with this stuff. So this is my 50 millimeter 1.2 lens. Amazing, I love this guy. And because this is a photography retreat workshop, I can just shoot with this all day long. And whereas the Sigma is my favorite lens for traveling um, because you don't have to move away as, as much. You, you don't really have to move around so much um, as you do with the 50 millimeter. I have an Instagram TV video I did on that. I love Instagram TV right now, but I did reasons on why I love the 35 as my travel lens. But because this is a photography workshop, I get to move around as much as I need to to get the shot. And the 51.2 is amazing. Now, if you want to learn the difference between the 51.2, the 51.4, the 51.8, I have a comparison a video. I'll link up on the cards. I have a lot of resources, you guys, for you. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Then next to that, we have my favorite little guy the Contax T3 little point and shoot, the best thing ever. If you're wondering why some of my stuff has all this pink tape, it's because we had to label all of our stuff just so it doesn't get mixed up. <sighs> this is just the best film point and shoot camera. If you want me to do a video on it, let me know down below if it's not already out and I decided to do it on my own. But I always bring this guy with me. When we went to the waterfall, I brought my camera stuff and then I also brought this. Now I didn't bring, I don't bring all of this on excursions, but I have little, like I have things for certain things. Does that make sense? This pouch is where I have my film, my film that is um, used and I have started to label it now. And I also keep a list in my notebook too. The reason I put it in a separate place is because I have shot over in Italy. I shot on some film or no, in Berlin, I shot on a roll of film that was the cutest roll on earth. And then in Italy, I accidentally shot over it because with that, with the Contax T3, this point and shoot camera, the tail doesn't roll in completely. And I'm so used to my Minolta, this tail going all the way in. That's how I would know if I shot on the film or not. So now I separate it and I make it as dramatic as possible because that is what I need <laughs> at this point. Um, so like I said, other side is completely empty. And I guess the last thing I want to kind of share is I discovered packing cubes recently. 
I thought that they were a scam and my friend, we were coming back from Barcelona. I had just bought some sweaters in the middle of summer because they were at a good price. And she had these packing cubes and she was jo so generous to let me borrow them. And I was like, there's no way that this is gonna pack up. It's like a space bag, y'all. So I love CalPack bags. Now I have two sets of the same kind. I have a pink one. This is for my clothes. This is for my office stuff and like other things that just ramble around in the suitcase. This is the best decision I could ever make. Why is this, what's in here? Oh, more pouches. I love pouches. One thing that I can encourage you, get as many pouches as you can for your gear and just for traveling with it in general, help keep everything organized. But having the separate, these, these packing cubes in this side helps me so much with other office stuff that I'm gonna need whenever I'm traveling. Oh, I forgot I also have this guy. This is so good, y'all. Little tiny backpack, little tiny one, like purse, it's the only purse I brought with me. Then you can put your little contacts in here. You can put your Leica in here, you know? I love that. So I think, is that all, Jenny? That's all that I brought with me to Bali and the clothes on my back. No, that's all the camera gear that I brought with me for this amazing workshop. Again, I'm teaching with Institute of Code at their social media and photography workshop. It's been the most amazing experience on earth and I love it with all my heart. And I just like, I can't believe I'm here. And I hope that this video was entertaining, interesting, helpful to anyone who's packing or you're maybe going on a photography workshop and you don't know how much to bring, how to pack it with also your clothes. Cause y'all being a photographer is really bulky. It's heavy. And this is a way that I was able to organize all my stuff. Um, and so I know you could also do the same. I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Whether you need a website, a domain, an online store, Squarespace has you covered. Seriously, I have been referring so many students at the photography workshop to Squarespace. I'd be like, use my code Jessica Whitaker for 10% off. Seriously, you can build out a professional polished portfolio in just a weekend that your clients will love and that you will actually be proud to share with clients and you'll stop saying, uh, my website's under construction. It's been under construction since 2016, Jenny. Let's get on it. Let's get on it. It's easy. We'll do it right now after this video. You can go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Jessica Whitaker to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Do you hear that? All the students in the back, they said yes, they're signing up. Jenny is ready to relaunch. Let's go. I love you, I believe in you, and I will see you in my next YouTube video. Bye.